Hi, I'm Rob Albright. You don't know my face and you probably don't know my name, but if you are one of those millions of fans who over the last quarter of a century have tuned into a NASCAR race on network radio, you've certainly heard my voice. And I was actually around the sport for about 15 years before that. I go back to the days before some of the names that you know from the history of the sport, Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin and Alan Kowicki, before they were even in NASCAR, let alone stars and ultimately champions. One of my favorite memories, however, is 1997 when I had an opportunity to help Kyle Petty put his young son, Adam, in an ASA car because he wasn't old enough yet to race in NASCAR. Adam would go on to have one ASA win, and unfortunately, we lost him far too young in his racing career. Who knows how many championships he might have won. However, there's another Petty, and he's in motorsports, and he's ready to show them how to win races in NASCAR. And it's my privilege today, then, to be able to come back here to Richard Petty Motorsports, the old original shop, what is now... Uh, the Richard Petty Museum, and to talk to Thad Moffat. Now, your last name's not Petty. Right, correct. Okay, so tell us about the relationship. So my mom is uh, Richard's youngest daughter. So Kyle would be my uncle, and then most people don't know that Richard has three daughters. They just know Mm -hmm. of Kyle, Uh, but he actually has three daughters, and my mom being the youngest uh, is why there's such a big age gap between myself and Adam. And uh, so me coming in so late, they were starting to think that I was great grandkid and fifth generation, but actually I'm cousin uh, to Adam. So I'm still a fourth generation racer, just a second, fourth generation racer. And uh, a fun fact is that we are the only uh, four generation in any professional wow. sport mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's super cool for me to be able to uh, go ahead and carry on that legacy and, and try and build a name for myself separate from uh, the petty name. Uh, being that my last name is Moffitt, I can kind of separate myself a little bit. Not that I don't want part of that legacy. I just think that uh, with uh, Richard having a, a accomplished everything he's accomplished mm-hmm. in his lifetime, it'd be hard to live up to uh, that name. So I kind of get uh, a better end of it by having the last mm-hmm. name Moffitt. When I go back to 1997 and I got the call from Kyle and he said, can you help me find an ASA team for Adam? He said, you're going to have to work with my business guy. Do you know who his business guy might have been back in 19? Steven. Well, it was it was actually Steven and your brother and your dad, yeah. Brian. So yes. we go way back. So may, your your last name's not Petty. But my guess is if I had a straight pen and I stuck stuck a little hole in your fingertip, you'd probably bleed Petty blue. Which. For sure. For <laughs> sure, yeah. From the beginning they've kind of installed that in us and uh, we've always been really, really close as a family and and even the Moffat family with the Petty family has become really, really close. You know, Stephen uh, has always been a big part of uh, our racing career, which is my uncle, uh, has been a big part of our racing career from the start with Adam and Kyle down to me now. And then my dad actually runs the race team, Richard Petty Motorsports. So so uh, the Moffitt and Petties have kind of intertwined and, and made uh, racing uh, a really, really big family thing on both sides of my family. A lot of folks have been around this place for, for more than a couple of decades and, and – um so I heard a couple of stories that when Adam was about 10 or 11 years old, they kind of dreaded him coming in here because <laughs> they wanted to know what all he was going to destroy while he was here. And then somebody said, and Thad was just like that. Were you like that? Were you a little terror at 10 or 11 years old? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that that's uh, the I, I take that as a compliment, you know, being compared to Adam all the time. Uh, I never go anywhere to any track and meet somebody where they're they don't compare me uh, to Adam. It's usually if they knew Adam and if they knew uh, what he did and how he acted and how he treated people um, and how he drove, they, they usually compare me and uh, him right off the bat. And I kind of uh, enjoy that. And, and hopefully I can carry on that legacy and have as much success in a short time as he did um, and then continue that on hopefully further than he did without going into a great amount of detail just share with us a couple of the successes that you've had in early in your motorsports career that that give you the confidence to know you can do this if you're in the right equipment with the right group of people so um my very first ever run at daytona i qualified outside front row uh and that was that was really really cool 
Um, but unfortunately, my tire blew with 10 to go in the race. After we had lost a lap, got back on the lead lap, and drove our way up into the top 10. So uh, Super Speedway success has been good for me so far. I had a top five this year at Daytona. Uh, my first career top five in the ARCA series was this year in the very first race at Daytona. And then uh, back to 2016 when it all started for me in a stock car, uh, we actually won uh, our fourth race as as, as me being – in a stock car like uh very first season green only thing i've ever driven was go-karts and we won our fourth race and uh we went on to win a championship that year mm -hmm. the southeast limited late wow, model okay. championship in my very first ever season uh the next year i became the first petty to ever win a race at myrtle beach speedway um and i never thought that would happen because we had so much success everywhere you know grandpa won so many races everywhere and kyle won if grandpa didn't win and adam won somewhere else mm -hmm. so uh, i never thought that i would be the first petty to win anywhere but for me to be the first petty to win at myrtle beach was uh really really cool for me and uh then we picked up one more win at greenville pick and speedway in the late model and at 16 i ended up making my arca debut uh, running with guys who were a lot older than me that I'd been running or that had been running the ARCA series for a while and uh, we've been competitive we showed speed every time we haven't got our first ARCA win yet but we've been close we've consistently in the top 10 each and every week and, and running the top five uh, and given given weekend we have a good car we may be in in the top three that I uh, having been the public address announcer and TV broad broadcaster for a number of years with ASA and then 24 years worth of doing play by play on radio for uh, performance racing network about 500 I counted them up the other day about 500 broadcasts of Xfinity races and cup races I've watched a lot of young talented drivers approach the sport want to come in to want to earn their way into the top ranks of the sport some with great success not some with not such great uh, success so I'm going to ask you the only question that I really want to put you on the spot with because through the years I've worked with a lot of young drivers and I'm going to have to I'm going to have to say you got petty blood so you've got talent there's a lot of young guys with talent but they don't have the fire in their belly they don't have the passion about this sport that it takes and the dedication that it takes convince me you have that passion yes yeah, so Grandpa kind of forced me into having that passion, you know. Uh, when I was um, 15 and I quit going to school, I had to work in the race shop every day. I had to drive to Mooresville uh, at 6 o'clock in the morning and work till 4 and work on the cars that I was wrecking every weekend. So uh, <laughs> then I decided that I would quit hey, wrecking. Jeff Gordon, <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you how many cars Jeff Gordon wrecked when yeah. he was figuring it out. you got to wreck a few race cars because if you don't know what the limits are, you're not going to drive right on that ragged edge. Yeah, but then you figure out maybe I shouldn't put my nose in that spot well, right there for too. fifth place uh <laughs> because i'm the one bolting it on next week uh, -huh. uh and so uh grandpa grandpa had to do that adam had to do that uh -huh. kyle had to do that and uh so for me to be able to do that kind of was like an eye opener for me uh you know um it's a little different now with dgr i kind of they they have everything figured out and i just go and drive but at my last team empire racing i would work every day from seven to four for three years on my own equipment and uh that kind of gave me uh a realization of the other side of, mm -hmm. of it uh opposed to the driving stuff and it made me want to do that much better for them and uh, i think it made them want to work that much harder for me if you want to be honest uh, i think that that me being there every day and me helping and, and showing that that i cared about it made them uh, care more for my side of it. I didn't even ask you about it, but you just gave me the third component for success. Number one is ability. Number two is passion. And number three is you have to be willing to get dirty and work on your own stuff. And you have done that. So I think what a lot of people, maybe if they're casual race fans, they haven't been around the sport for a long time, they may watch a NASCAR race and they say the same three or four guys seem to win most of the races. So they must be they must be better drivers than all the rest of the guys. But you and I know that there's another element that's absolutely critical, and that's having sufficient sponsorship because unlike stick and ball sports, in most cases you have to have companies that step to the plate and support you and your racing career and believe in you yeah. early on in your career just like you are right now. Correct, correct. Uh, so 
We've we've had multiple partners uh, over the years, but our most recent partner is is a company called Clean Packs. Okay, that's the shirt and the hat. Yeah, that's the shirt <laughs> okay. and the hat. Yeah, so they're our most recent partner, and uh, we're really excited to partner with these guys uh, now in 2020 for one race, and then and, and then of course in the future uh, through 2021 and 2022 and so on. Um, but uh, one of the biggest things that that I appreciate that they do uh, for me as a, as a millennial. Uh, we're all green. We're all about green everything, saving the environment. You know, uh, that's kind of our age group. And uh, these guys uh, do reusable bottles. And you just buy the pack and you drop the pack in and mix it with water. So instead of going and buying a bottle of Windex or, or disinfecting every week, uh, you're really just buying one bottle and then buying a bunch of little packets that dissolve. So there's no trash. You know, uh, you're saving. Uh, a bunch of space in landfills that that could be uh, ruining the environment. So I appreciate that uh, that those guys kind of have that outlook at the yeah. What what I would ask you is they do a variety of different products yeah. that for a variety of different needs and are the products i mean i gotta ask you are the products comparable as good as or better than what you go buy off the shelf at a grocery store or yeah from what i've Depot? seen the first day that that i got the products i kind of use them because i like to use the products and make sure that they work you know before i i'm gonna go try and support it uh i like to be one that that like make sure it works before you know like, who that sounds like, like with performance plus like my grandpa that sounds like richard petty he does the same exact thing <laughs> he's always been so like way. with performance plus i wouldn't put it in my car until like we had saw that it was better than mobile one you know okay. like why would i use the least better oil? So, so uh the first time that i got the products we went home and we cleaned everything like i was just wiping off counters and stuff just because and uh the biggest thing that i saw was i cleaned the windows in my car and it looked 10 times better and not as streaky the product actually worked and, and so that's something that i appreciated from the start because i'm not going to get behind a product that that didn't work so this is a new relationship and and obviously with with what's gone on over the last several months that nobody could have anticipated and missing a bunch of races at the cup level and the xfinity level truck level the arca series yeah. missed a lot of races there are a lot of companies that have taken big hits, and I, I've talked to a lot of team owners and people who are involved in the sport on the marketing side and the sponsorship side that say they're really having a difficult time either with their existing sponsors or finding new ones, yet you've been able to do that. So what makes this one special? Um, so I think that, that it's beneficial for both of us. Uh, right now is the perfect time for clean packs to be out and in our sport you know with covid with everybody being crazy about cleaning things and it's not going anywhere anytime soon you know people are are going to continue this after the covid pandemic because they know the possibilities that could happen now okay. uh, so th i think it's perfect for them to be in front of that crowd uh, and it's perfect for me uh, to get to run more races with with them on my car and get to uh kind of show them our side of, of uh, the world with the with the race and stuff. Well, we're, we're not here just to hawk a product per se, but how would people that, that maybe for the first time may be saying, wow, there's a Petty that's racing? I know your last name's Moffat, but your mom's a Petty, born a Petty, and you've still got that Petty blue in your blood like we talked about. But two things, how can people find out more about Thad Moffat if they want to start tracking your career, number one, and yeah. number two, where do they go if they want more information about your sponsor? Because I've known all along, and that's that's what keeps sponsors in the sport, is they get passionate fans that go out and try a product, and they yeah. say, wow, this is great, and then they tell other people about it, and that's what makes our sport go. Yeah, so uh, you can follow me on Facebook at Thad Moffitt Racing, on Twitter at Thad Moffitt, um, on Instagram, Thad Moffitt 46 and um, you can go to cleanpacks.com and use code TM46, and uh, you can actually get a discount on the on the products for uh, your first use. Okay, go check so it that out. So they can remember that. Where does the TM46 come from? <laughs> this is, that's my name and, and my number, right? <laughs> so Thad Moffitt, uh, my logo is a TM, and then a 46 is, of course, my racing number. Well, Thad, I have not seen you for, for nine years, and you've grown up. Uh, I guess when you come in here anymore, they don't have to worry about you 
wreaking havoc in here, tearing any stuff. No, up, now they right? make me work in here. Right, right. Well, just as a just as a final question, you grew up like we talked about in this building, in on this property, which is where Richard Petty Motorsports originally was and where it got its start. Now it's the home of the Richard Petty Museum, obviously, because we're sitting right next to to Adam's car. Um, but do you feel any extra responsibility or any extra weight? as a result of looking at all of this and knowing the history that's behind it and knowing how hard you being a fourth fourth generation petty racer uh, how difficult it is to be successful at this sport yes yeah, so uh, they don't really put any pressure on me my my grandfather kyle anybody you know they've never ex- put extra pressure on me it's always been uh, kind of my own deal uh, like I'll put extra pressure on myself going to certain places, you know, uh, like if I went back to New Hampshire or uh, going into Daytona is, is like a really big deal for me. So I'll put uh, pressure on myself because my family has so much history at, at certain places. Um, but I know that either way, if I run 33rd or if I win the race and I come home, grandpa's not going to love me anymore or any less. Yeah. And uh, Kyle's not going to care for me anymore or any less. They might tell me, uh, how messed up I was and, and ha- like they'll give me constructive criticism sure. and tell me exactly what I did wrong the whole entire time. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not shy about that at all, but um, that they, they'll still love me just as much either way. So uh, I've never really felt that extra pressure to kind of hold up that, that legacy. You know, I've kind of just always done my own thing and, and uh, known that they'll be there for me either way. Mm-hmm. 2020 season is coming to a close. It's a new sponsorship relationship. Are you looking to see that Clean Packs logo maybe in a primary role on your race car at some point? Yes, so they actually have one primary uh, sponsorship this year at, at Memphis Speedway uh, in September, and then we're hoping to uh, to get more races for uh, next year. We want to show uh, everybody the Clean Packs product all over the country, and so uh, if we could get more more. Uh, primary sponsorships for 2021 it would benefit both of us uh, greatly i think awesome is there a fan is there a thad moffat fan club <laughs> there is a thad moffat okay. fan when club. i go home when i go from home from here i'm gonna join all right how much does it cost to join i don't know i think it's free <laughs> <laughs> i hope so because i don't have a lot of money but i want to thank you and i've sure had a great time getting to know you again yeah and spending some time with I you i appreciate so. you having me buddy. have a great have a great career thank you